as I've been watching the news regarding what's going on in Israel, I've been noticing that in comments that people are saying prophecy is being fulfilled. And so since they're saying that, I've asked them repeatedly, what prophecy is that? Will you please cite where you're talking about in scripture? And no one responds. You know why they don't respond? Because what they think is playing out right now is not actually in scripture. God says he sends a great delusion, deception to those who do not love truth. And so what they think is going on right now is a sort of story that has circulated in counterfeit Christianity about how the end times are going to go, that they can hasten Armageddon, which is stupid because Armageddon happens after the resurrection. So why would you want to hasten Armageddon? I would think that you would want to be focused on going up in the first resurrection, but okay. If you're here during Armageddon, it's because you didn't make it, ding dong, and you're going into the lake of burning sulfur. So these are people who do not understand the word. They don't know the word at all. They have been listening to counterfeit pastors, counterfeit false teachers, and false prophets tell them a story of the end times that is not in the Bible. I think one of the worst of them is John Hagee and also Jonathan Kahn. And another one is Amir Safardi. I don't even know if I'm saying his name right. It doesn't really matter to me. These are false teachers. They are perpetuating false doctrines. And those who don't love the truth, who, you know, when you ask them, where is that in scripture? They don't know because they don't love the truth. The truth is found in God's word. So what I want you to know is that there is prophecy being fulfilled. It's not the prophecy that counterfeit Christianity thinks is being fulfilled, but there is prophecy that is being fulfilled. Oh, you betcha. I want to read to you first what God warned about. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 1. Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by the teaching allegedly from us, whether by a prophecy or by word of mouth or by letter, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. Do not let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Oh, okay, so something is going to be in God's church, proclaiming itself to be God. The Antichrist that sets itself up in the beautiful land, as Daniel says. We know who the Antichrist is. I've demonstrated it for you multiple times in these videos. The Antichrist is not a man. The Antichrist is Satan. And Satan has a kingdom of Antichrists. And in the very end, the Antichrist of which is spoken, of which is spoken in Revelation is that kingdom. And so what we should be understanding is that there is a kingdom of people claiming to be in Christ who are actually anti-Christ. God said you have to worship him in the spirit and in truth. That's what he said in the book of John chapter four. True worshipers must worship him in the truth and in the spirit, not in cathedrals and what you're calling churches. There's only one church and it's not a building. It's the people of God. God does not dwell in temples made by human hands. You are supposed to worship him in the truth and in the spirit. So Paul is addressing a false doctrine that was occurring at the time in which people were saying the, the resurrection had already come and people were freaking out because, you know, they were still here. But Paul also clears, clarifies something, doesn't he? He said, don't let anyone deceive you in any way for that day will not come until a rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed. That's Satan. Okay. The man of lawlessness is going to be revealed during the 45 days, the 1290th day to the 1335th day, at the very end of the Antichrist reign, both the man of lawlessness, who is Satan, and Jesus are going to be revealed. It doesn't mean you're going to see him. It means they're going to be revealed. You're going to know what this has all been about, this battle between good and evil. They're going to be revealed. Well, we know by that time that the Witnesses will have been killed by the Antichrist. They will have testified for 1260 days. 
then the Antichrist will rise and kill, overpower and kill them. And having been kicked out of the heavenly realms, because the testimony of the witnesses and the blood of the lamb, Revelation 12, these are the two things that were required in order to triumph over the devil and kick him out of heaven. So in Revelation 9, you see that Satan, the star, falls from the sky, goes into the abyss, has the keys to the abyss, and then he rises out of the abyss. And in Revelation 11, you see that he overpowers and kills the witnesses. In Revelation 9, you're seeing that that's happening because when the fifth trumpet blows, this is when all of that goes down. And then he goes to, to pursue God's people. Now, the false narrative in counterfeit Christianity is that God's people are Jews, are an ethnic group. What, what? what Bible are they reading? Israel has always been God's people. And initially, they were descended from Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. Guess what? They didn't have a land. They were in captivity to the Egyptians. And then they were given a land and they prostituted themselves to the false gods in those lands. And God drove them from the land. So they don't have a land. When Netanyahu says for the last 3,000 or 4,000 years, this is where our people are. No, it is not. That is a lie. They went into captivity to the Babylonians, to the Medes and Persians, to Greeks, and then to Rome. What is he talking about? By the way, that was after being driven from the land. Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome. They did not have land. They were driven from the land. So now when you hear false teachers like David Jeremiah or Jimmy Evans talking about pre-tribulation rapture, you should know better that all of these things have to happen and they are not happy. No one's bearing your covenant for you. Some Jews in the Middle East are not bearing their covenant, your covenant for you. They're laughing at those who actually believe this. They think that they are idiots and they're right. And they are exploiting that stupidity. Paul makes it clear. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and exalt himself over everything that is called God or his worship so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Okay, so that's what he's doing in the church. We are the temple, not some temple that's gonna be built in the Middle East. God does not dwell in temples made by human hands. We are the temple. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things, and now you know what is holding him back so that he may be revealed at the proper time. Well, the proper time is during that 45 days. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. And I've told you this many times in these videos that God, no one has power to take God out of the way, but because God is a respecter of choice, when you choose to turn from him, that's when he's taken out of the way or takes himself out of the way. You know, and as he says in scripture, who's going to care for you, Jerusalem? Who's going to care for you? I mean, really think about that. If God is not caring for you, who's going to? Everything good you have in your life has come from him. It certainly hasn't come from the devil. Everything good, which includes anything that he puts on a person's heart to do for you. If God's not caring for you, who is? Who's gonna? We need to think about that while we're thinking of spurning him. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of, of his coming. Well, that sounds like he's gonna be revealed close to Jesus coming. Well, yeah, those 45 days between the 1290th and the 1335th day, he's being revealed and then Jesus will come. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power. Now, in other translations, and this is the correct, the correct translation is that he's using displays of false power through false signs and false wonders that serve the lie. And all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing, they perish because they refused to love the truth and so be saved. So it's not because it's not available. They refused it. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness. Okay, so this is being fulfilled right here. This is one prophecy that is being fulfilled. I'm going to show you another. 
But do you see this? They perish because they refused to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie and so that all will be condemned who have not believed truth but have delighted in wickedness. Look, the witnesses are here and they're talking about what the truth is and people are rejecting it all the time. So think about it. I tell you after every single video, go discern this with God. Go ask him if what I'm saying is true. But you know what? It's so easy just to hit the unsubscribe button, huh? If you don't like what I'm saying. Let me tell you something. If you love truth, you, it doesn't matter if you like what I'm saying because it's not my message anyway. The only thing that matters is truth. The only thing that matters is that you love God enough to go back and ask him. And you can say to him, I don't like what she's saying. Is it true? You can go take that up with him because if I'm a false teacher, he's going to deal with me. So I encourage you, go to him. Tell him to deal with me if I'm a false teacher. You tell him to do that. But you ask him. If I'm from him, you know why I'm not scared to tell you to go and tell him because I, I do fear God. You know why I'm not afraid for you to go do that? Because I know what I'm doing. So each and every one of you, you go and tell him if she is a false teacher, foil her, expose her. I want to tell you something. I have prayed that I have asked him if anything that I'm teaching is false, expose me. And you pray that for all the people you've been listening to, guys. But then you need to go looking for truth. You need to be pursuing truth in God's word. Is what I'm saying correct or not? All right, so that's one prophecy that's being fulfilled right now. So, you know, the, the narratives that have gone on in counterfeit Christianity about communism, about the mark of the beast, about, uh, you know, the mark of the beast is going to be a chip or it's going to be AI, and suddenly AI is here right just in time for the mark of the beast. But see, the thing is, the mark of the beast starts in your heart. You've already been told that you're going to be justified by your heart and that what comes from your heart comes out of your right hand and your forehead, your deeds, the things you speak, the things you believe, the things you think. So God isn't going to make it that obvious for you to just say, oh, no, not going to take that. No, this, this is really about you being transformed internally. And if God is really in you, are you being moved to follow his laws and keep his decrees? Because that's the only way that he's in you. There's no way that if you are still able to live the life that you were living a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, I mean, literally six months ago, I'm constantly growing. People of God are constantly being cleaned up. They're being purified, made spotless and refined until the day that God comes back. And there's a lot of work to be done. So if you're still the, pers the same person, it's been a false alarm because my Bible says that when God removes that heart of stone, places in you a heart of flesh, a softened heart and a spirit in your heart, he begins to move you to follow his laws and keep his decrees. My Bible says that if you are deliberately sinning, there's no sacrifice left for you. My Bible says that it's impossible for someone who's been enlightened and tasted of the heavenly gift to fall and be brought back into repentance. So what's going on with all these um, self-proclaimed Christians? You know, I heard J.D. Vance at the RNC say, my mamma loved the Lord and she also loved the F word. Oh, that's so funny, funny, funny. And everyone laughed in the audience, all the, all the Christians, okay. All the Christians. Listen, if you want to love Trump, you guys do you, but stop calling it Christianity because that is not Christianity. Revelation 13. The dragon stood on the shore of the sea, and I saw a beast coming out of the sea. It had ten horns and seven heads with ten crowns on its horns, and each head a blasphemous name. The beast I saw resembled a leopard, but it had feet like those of a bear and a mouth like that of a dragon. The dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. One of the heads of the beast seemed to have a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. The whole world was follow filled with wonder and followed the beast. You see that in counterfeit Christianity? Are they filled with wonder following this beast? People worship the dragon because he'd given authority to the beast. Well, whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean? These are people calling themselves, themselves Christian, but they worship the dragon, Satan, because he'd given authority to the beast. And they also worship the beast and asked, who is like the beast? Who can wage war against it? The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise its authority for 42 months. Okay, so that's the Antichrist reign. It's going to happen after the witnesses are killed next year. 
It opened its mouth to blaspheme God. By the way, how do I know that? Because I know what I'm doing. Because I know that I am a witness. I know that. And I know how many days I am required to do what I'm doing. And I know that the Antichrist is going to rise next year to overpower and kill the witnesses. That would be me. And then the Antichrist reign will begin. It opened its mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name in his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. It was given power to wage war against God. So, but keep in mind, by the way, these are people who claim to be in him. That, that's who's doing this right now. These are people who are claiming to be in him. You want an example of it? Watch the RNC. Listen to the things people are saying. Watch them bow down to Israel and worship this counterfeit Israel in the Middle East. Watch them stand by and give their approval for genocide and claim to be doing all of this in the name of God. You know, do you know that that prophecy also is fulfilled in the Bible? That the book of John, in the book of John, Jesus says, the very people who will kill you are those claiming to do a service to God. Do you realize that that's what's going on right now? God said, don't murder. Oh, but only if they're Muslim or what? Only if they're Palestinians? <laughs> like, what, what, are, what are they even justifying? It was given power to wage war against God's holy people and conquer them, okay? That will, ha that will begin next year. And it was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written in the Lamb's Book of Life, the Lamb who was slain from the creation of the world. So what the word is saying is that the very people who think that they are in Christ are going to be worshiping the beast. They are going to worship the beast. They're going to take the mark of the beast. They're going to be branded or labeled or marked as belonging to the beast. Do you guys realize that? People calling themselves Christian. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast. All whose names have not been written in the Lamb's book of life, the Lamb who was slain from the creation of the world. Whoever has ears, let them hear. If anyone is to go into captivity, into captivity they will go. If anyone is to be killed by the sword, with the sword they will be killed. This calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of who? God's people. That's what it says. This calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of God's people. So I, I just don't understand what exactly people are thinking who are calling themselves Christian when they, when they interpret God's people to be a group of Jews in the Middle East who are committing murder. Uh, what does that make you? It's kind of weird. and In fact, it's a lot weird. Now listen to this. Here is another prophecy that is being fulfilled. Then I saw a second beast coming out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. So looks like a lamb, speaks like a dragon. It claims to be Christian, though it is not. It is of the devil. It exercised all the authority of the first beast on its behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. Okay, spoiler, spoiler alert. This is the United States of America. That is the false prophet. How do I know that? Because in Daniel 2, it starts with Babylon. Let's count it down. Babylon fell to Medo-Persia. Medo-Persia fell to Greece. Greece fell to pagan Rome. Pagan Rome fell to papal Rome. There's your Antichrist. That began counterfeit Christianity. In Revelation 17, you're going to have those same kingdoms, but now it's telling you about eight kingdoms. And the eighth is one of those five. We already know which one it is. It's number five. Well, papal Rome fell to atheistic communism. And I don't think that the, the very kingdom that took it down is going to testify to it. The seventh kingdom that took down communism, maybe in your lifetime, Mr. Gorbachev, take down that wall. That's the United States. So there's no other option in terms of who this, this beast that's testifying to the Antichrist would be. It's not going to be communism. It's going to be the United States. And then the eighth kingdom is of the seven, and it's rising again as that Antichrist. Well, let's see if it fits the prophecy. It exercised all the authority of the first beast on its behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. Does it lead you back to Rome? Does it lead you back to Catholicism? Yeah, it sure does. In fact, that Statue of Liberty, that image over in New York, that is Libertas. That's a Roman god. And all these doctrines that, you know, that the Antichrist is a man, Christmas, Easter, the image of the cross, the image of statues and nativities and relics and pictures of so-called Jesus, that all came from them. These stupid doctrines that the leaders of this country keep repeating, 
That came from Rome and counterfeit Christianity, the prostitutes that bore out of her. So yeah, they testify to her. They sure do. And it performed great signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to earth in full view of people. Because of the signs it was given to perform on behalf of the first beast, it deceived the inhabitants of the earth. It ordered them, by the way, fire coming down from heaven, that's judgment. That means it persecuted. It has persecuted to gain power. It has waged war. Now, take a look at what's happening right now, okay? Because we don't even need to be historians in order to be able to see this. Look at what's happening right now. If you can, you can be Israeli and do whatever you want, right? You can, you can uh, commit murder, persecute Muslims. You can do and say whatever you want. But the minute that somebody protests against what Israel is doing, what happens? They're arrested. And actually, even if you're Israeli and you're speaking against what Israel is doing, you can be arrested. So I correct my comment. It's really, if you're not worshiping this image that has been created and set up by the United States, because the United States created this, it was obviously testified to by the, uh, you know, in the Balfour Declaration, but Netanyahu was here in America being created by America and then became prime minister of Israel. And the U.S. has covered for that man so many times and created these false doctrines. Because of the signs it was given power to perform on behalf of the first beast, it deceived the inhabitants of the earth. It ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast. Okay, is it ordering you to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived? Israel is that image. Because real Israel, actual genuine Israel, are those who are God's people, those who are circumcised in heart, those who are in his covenant. And Paul said that, that not all who are descended from Israel are, is, are Israel. Not all who are descended from Abraham are Abraham's children. John the Baptist said the same thing. He said, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? He said that to the Pharisees and the Sadducees when they came to that place where John had been baptizing. And the next thing he said was, don't tell me that you have Abraham as your father, because God can make children for Abraham from stones. God doesn't need you. You need him. So all of this nonsense, all of this arrogance, oh, Jesus paid it all. I don't have to do anything because Jesus paid it all. And I'm just going up in some counterfeit rapture before I have to suffer anything, even though God said, to, you know, that you're going to suffer. And even though Paul said, everyone who's in him is going to suffer. Everyone who's in him has a task. I don't know what these people are thinking. So let's talk about prophecy that's being fulfilled. The second beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast. So this is a living beast to worship uh, so that the image could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. The United States gave breath to Netanyahu, to counterfeit Israel. If God's people are Israel and this counterfeit over here is calling itself Israel, then that is an image of what counterfeit Christianity and counterfeit Jews have set up. It is an image. And I want you to understand what that image does. It also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. And the verse right before it, I just want to, I want to highlight this. I know I read it, but I want to make sure that you understand. The image could speak. So the United States gives power and breath to the image or was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that the image could speak and cause all who refuse to worship the image to be killed. That's already started happening, guys. So if you can't see this right now, that they are persecuting their own people who they claim are self-hating Jews, who are Jews and they claim that they are anti-Semites and they are self-hating Jews because, and, and it's not about being Jewish. They hate Zionism because Zionism is a lie. It is a fabrication of the false prophet and this image. And so you should be able to see right now that this is what's happening, that this is what's being fulfilled. 
These prophecies are actually in the word. What is being, what is being perpetuated right now is not in the word, in counterfeit Christianity. What they're saying about how this is going to hasten Armageddon and they're going to fight this physical battle. And, you know, they're, I mean, it's just really, it's foolishness, absolute foolishness. I encourage you when people are saying, when you see that people are saying prophecy is being fulfilled, ask them where, where is it in the Bible? Can you show me? And maybe that will cause them to question. And maybe it will provide you an opportunity to tell the truth. Although I'm going to tell you right now, I haven't met a single person who actually wanted to know the truth. None of them are willing to defend what it is that they believe. None of them are willing to even question it because they're not coming back and saying, oh, you know, actually, I don't know where it is in the Bible. In that case, I'd be able to have a conversation with them, but they're just not even responding. Please go discern this message with God.